So let's get started. Today we are going to show you how to find fail calls on a SIP based VoIP phone network. We'll first describe the symptoms of a fail call to users, then we're going to give a quick overview of a SIP passive monitoring system, the architecture. Then we're going to show you a quick demo on how to find these fail calls in seconds with Oracle's Enterprise Operations Monitor, EOM. Then we'll finish off with what causes failed calls and some smarts that EOM has to assist fast troubleshooting. In contrast to dropped VoIP calls, which we covered in our last Can You Hear Me Now series video, failed calls are calls that never set up six successfully, never establish a voice path between the two parties, the calling and the call-out parties. The user will experience either fast busy, continuous dead air, or please try your call again later, you've heard that one before. Or there could be an extended ringing period which never goes to voicemail, at which point you just get fed up and hang up. Before we do the demo, just a word about the architecture of EOM. The Oracle Enterprise Operation Monitor, formerly known as Palladian, which TerraQuant introduced to the market way back in 2008, is a passive monitoring system for SIP-based IP telephony services. A duplicate of all SIP signaling packets on the network and the media packets are sent or tapped or spanned or port mirrored southbound down to the monitoring probe as indicated by these green or grey blobs here on the diagram. These probes send a digest of that information up to the central UI and database an analysis entity we call the mediation engine. So now to the demo. So this is the dashboard where any of these measurements down the left hand side can be pushed up as a widget onto the dashboard personalized for your own use on your browser. For example, this dashboard shows registered users, the volume of active calls and recent calls. So if we want to do any troubleshooting, we typically move down here to the calls page. Here we have every call captured in the database and if you can, you can go back in history and filter on and pull up the details going back as far as 30 days into the past. Here EOM has created a CDR, but really an enriched CDR, pulling any data you need from the raw SIP message, any SIP headers or fields, or the media, and that is populated into this enriched CDR. Over here, you can see the very useful status column. These calls are just currently established. The nice green color shows all is good. If your customer or end user calls in to your help desk with a complaint about the quality of a call that happened some while ago, they might just say, I had a call last week out of all the hundreds that I made. Please find that call then fix it and make sure it never happens again. So then just enter their phone number in this box here under the caller column. Alternatively, if you can see an example of their call or their number, then just right mouse click and filter on their phone number. So let's return to this status column where EOM gets a bit opinionated and classifies the calls into useful natural language categories to assist troubleshooting. For example, we have the currently established call having gone through the ringing state. These states are updated in real time as the call progresses. Timed out calls, which we discussed last time in our Can You Hear Me Now VoIP troubleshooting videos. And if the call fails, you'll see this state indicated here as failed in red. All types of failure during call setup will be indicated as such here. So this forms an easy way to find fail calls, ones that failed during call setup, as opposed to the ones that were dropped after a successful call setup. So we are still filtering on this caller at 801 in this case. 
So we're seeing all her failed calls. If we turn off that caller filter, we will see all failed calls on the network within this time period. So you can see that a common cause of these failures are 503 SIP response errors. We'll drill down on those in more detail in a minute. So we want to drill down and see exactly the message sequence and the message content that actually led up to this failure. So we select the call and press this magic button up here and we drill down on the familiar looking message flow diagram. We can select so that Alice originated the call. Click on that invite, message number one, it pops up. Put it down here. We can pop over here and open the other invites coming out of the lab gateway, going off to a SIP trunk. See that we got actually a, a response coming back from the SIP trunk indicating 488, which our lab PBX turns into the 503 seen from the point of the endpoint, Alice. Uh, so EOM uh, provides the final response result failure cores as 503 service unavailable even though there was the 488 not acceptable here was sent back from the SIP trunk carrier. So we can see how useful this state column is identifying broad classifications of errored calls failed calls, timed out calls. Now, how frequently is this 503 error occurring? 503 response code formally means a system error, but it's frequently used to indicate a link failure or a route to destination that cannot be found in an operational network. Here we can see that EOM can be set up to configure hundreds of different parameters within an IP telephony service. We can dedicate a complete Can You Hear Me Now series on proactive performance monitoring in the near future. But for now, we've already set up this 503. Once we have defined a KPI, we can go into the alert section up here and set up the alert thresholds, which when exceeded will send us traps and SNMP traps or emails to alert us of these high volumes of errors or they can be used to indicate outages or a whole range of different operational events we need to automatically be made aware of and alerted to when they occur in normal operations or in the network operations center. Some of these call failures do not carry an explicit SIP response error code such as 503, but in the state details column here, we are given more insight into the cause of the failure here it specifically states timed out during call setup. What does this mean? Well, let's select this call and drill down on the message flow diagram and see the details. Here we can see the call being initiated by this invite from IP address 45.143.220.13, but there's no response back from the receiving end. This endures until this timeout is triggered by EOM, which is uniquely monitoring the state and the state duration of every intermessage exchange. This timeout, the time that a call remains without a response, is pulled from the SIP RFC standards. So we leverage our expert in SIP and build this into the EOM monitoring tool to help users quickly find problems. So let's return to the slides to see the conditions constituting failures specifically and other states as defined by EOM. So what happens technically on your SIP network to cause a failed call? Well, perhaps your SPC, your session border controller or your carrier telephone company can find no route to the destination of the call or because the network is computer based now, and computers have outages, sometimes systems go down and there's no soft switch available to process your call. Or there may be a problem with your enterprise PBX or conf misconfiguration or your IVR. Or maybe the user doesn't have a valid account to use services on this VoIP network. Or maybe there's a software protocol interworking error problem between the two different vendors 
your PBX or your SBC for example with or SBC and carrier SIP trunk within uh, within the software or the SIP stacks being used so all those failures will be categorized as a failed call by EOM it has this special state column that you saw in the demo that allows you easily to identify fail calls so you can escalate them to your engineering department to drill down deeper on the root cause this failed status SIP condition where a final response error message is given during the call setup if the call was set up and then failed we classify this as a dropped call or a timed out call a subject we covered in our last video series SIP response codes are grouped by their first digit for example a 1x x like a 100 is an interim response 300 is also an interim response indicating redirects like 302 all SIP response codes from 4xx 400 upwards including 5xx for server failure and 6xx for system or network failure are final SIP response codes um, and they also indicate failures so if EOM detects at least one of these SIP response codes during call setup it would classify the call as having failed as therefore fail calls can be easily found by you when troubleshooting so in summary just to remember please use the filter in the state column to filter out filter in all your failed calls if you'd like to know more about EOM or interested in advanced training for your users please come to the original experts info at terraquant.com in the next video of our can you hear me now series we will demonstrate how to troubleshoot expired registrations or failed SIPs registrations if you have any feedback meanwhile or comments to these tech tips we would be delighted to hear from you please message me on LinkedIn See you on the next Can You Hear Me Now no fluff video and thanks for watching. Bye bye.